Good morning. Um, it looks like people are still hopping on this webinar and I'm just really happy to be here on behalf of Alaska Executive Search and Bradison Management Group. Um, I have the pleasure of introducing McKinley Capital today and looking forward to hearing all the good news that you have to share and um, hopefully um, things that are happening for us economically. Um, it's always nice to introduce a fellow Alaskan and today is no different. And I just want to uh, say welcome back to work to everybody joining us today. And um, I'm certainly invigorated by putting people back to work and getting back into the office myself. So thank you, Bill, for continuing this series. Really appreciate my friends over at AEDC. And Rob, nice to see you eventually in person again. But for now, this is great. Thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you. And, and our thanks to Bradison Management Group and uh, Alaska Executive Search for sponsoring today's event. Welcome, everyone. I'm Bill Pop. I'm president and CEO of the Anchorage Economic Development Corporation. And this is this month's edition of the AEDC Voice. We're very, very pleased today to have Rob Gillum with McKinley uh, Capital, McKinley Management Group, um, just the McKinley Group of Companies joining us today. Uh, Rob is an outstanding leader in the business community, doing amazing things with his companies and the team of incredible professionals that are all working for him. And we're very, very honored and pleased to have Rob here today to just share some insights that he has regarding his companies and what he's seeing going on in the Anchorage and Alaska economy. So without further ado, Rob, the floor is yours, sir. All right. Well, Bill, thank you very much. And thanks to everybody at AEDC. And of course, uh, appreciate you, Paula, as well. Uh, really appreciate the partnership. Uh, honored to work with you. The work that you do, obviously, is great. Lots of people dialing in, of course, because they agree with that. So uh, really humbled. And the series that you've been putting on is fantastic. I had a chance to take a look at some of the other speakers and really some great information sharing going on, which I think is, is important these days. Welcome back to work. So those of you that are getting back, nice to, uh, nice to actually be in my office here today. So Again, super thanks for, for having me. So as Bill just said, my name is Rob Gillum. I am bullish on Alaska. And I'm gonna spend the next few minutes here telling you a little bit uh, why I'll leave plenty of time for questions. I'm gonna share a screen, show you a couple of videos. We'll have a little bit of fun with it. Give you some facts and figures that hopefully will uh, give you some information as to why I am bullish on Alaska. And maybe a little bit uh, of information about why you might wanna be too. So I wanna start with this. When you think about Alaska, when you think about Alaska, when I think about Alaska, we look out our window right over here and I see downtown, I see Bill's office. When I look the other direction, I see the airport. When you look out of your office, you might see Spinard, you might see, might be in Girdwood, might be someplace close. Um, that's not what the world sees. Um, the world sees this, and I'm gonna let this go up here a little bit. Uh, and spin while I give you a couple of personal anecdotes. So many of you know our firm's been around for a long time, 30 years. Uh, my father founded the firm in 1990 with a very simple premise, and that is that the advent of the computer could level the playing field and make Alaska as competitive anywhere uh, as Wall Street. This is what the world sees about Alaska. They see that we're kind of the center, looking top down here. You go right straight across and you're in Europe and you go to the left and you're in Asia or a little bit south and you're in Asia. So they see a little different perspective. And, and I sort of had this professional epiphany a few years ago. So over the last 28 years, I've traveled the world. I've been very grateful to build a business with a great group of folks up here in Alaska and some of our other offices uh, investing capital all around the world for clients from all over the world. Uh, and it occurred to me a few years ago that when I make presentations, people I sometimes remember what I do. Occasionally, they remember the name of my firm. Rarely do they remember my name. I'm just a money manager from some place. But I can tell you what they always remember. They always remember Alaska. They always remember where I'm from. And I want to share with you uh, a couple of reasons today why that's important. So here was my epiphany. A couple of years ago, as I was coming home from a, a long road trip, thinking to myself, what in the world am I doing going out there and telling everybody about how we can manage, manage their money out there? They're telling me about all the things that they're looking for in terms of investment. And man, that sure sounds like home. So we turned the funnel upside down and we created a whole new enterprise called McKinley, Alaska, uh, with the idea of bringing capital from everywhere back home to make this place a difference. 
like many of you, I'm a, a multi-generational Alaskan family. I'm a third generation Alaskan. Uh, my grandparents came here starting in the 19, late 1920s. Um, they came here, no internet, obviously, none of that kind of stuff. They came here because how could a place so beautiful, so big, and so filled with resources not create opportunity for them? You might remember, some of you, that that is called the pioneer spirit, right? Making it happen from nothing. We have that opportunity, and it's, it's right here, and it's right now. And I want to share a couple of things, but I'll start with this. I don't know. It's, it's a little hard on a virtual screen. I, I promise I won't ask everybody to raise their hand or look too closely here. But if you can look and think about a perspective, if you look at your hand about five or six inches from your eyeballs, you know, that's, that's a pretty close perspective. When you look at Alaska from that close perspective, it can be a little daunting. It can be a little scary. There's been some, some bad stuff. It's been difficult the last year. When you look at that and move your hand a little farther away, you have a broader perspective. And a little farther away for Alaska, there's some really great sunshine out there. And I'll, I'll share those uh, anecdotes with you. So let's get started here. So if you're not familiar with McKinley, Bill mentioned it. McKinley Capital is the one that many uh, people are familiar with. We're actually a group of three companies. McKinley Capital is our original public uh, equity, bonds, currencies, and financial technology platform. Uh, McKinley, Alaska, which we're talking about today, is the opportunity to bring capital back into our great state and hopefully make a big difference. The McKinley Research Group uh, is very honored to be partners with the AEDC and a lot of the economic and policy research that's, uh, that's done by that group. So again, really happy to be here today. Um, we are thinking about Alaska-themed investment opportunities. Um, if, if we were in person, I would say to you, raise your hand, admit it, if you've been a little bearish on Alaska. Admit it if you've been thinking, well, I maybe need to diversify a little bit outside. Admit it if you thought, well, there's really nothing going on here. It's pretty tough. It's pretty bad. I would imagine that at least in our deepest, darkest mind, we might actually admit that we were a little more bearish than we would like to admit. We are trying to turn that upside down and create Alaska-sourced or Alaska-themed investment opportunities. So think of it as in Alaska, by Alaska, or for Alaska. So we want to co-invest. Our firm co-invests with uh, large, recognized global experts experienced in capital and strategic uh, asset allocation. So these are groups that make investments all over the world. They're considered experts in some category. Maybe it's oil and gas. Maybe it's technology. Uh, maybe it's uh, ESG related or something similar. And what we're trying to do here is we're trying to obviously generate a return. We get hired by clients to generate a return. As a third generation Alaska, I'd really like to generate a return and do something great for a place that I hope my kids and my grandkids live as well. Um, private investment is this sort of nebulous term, though. Um, there's actually three parts of it. So private equity is investing in the equity or the ownership uh, of a company. We have an entity that does that. It's it's called a fund. It's called the Nanook Investment Fund. Some of you may have heard about it. We've been honored to work for a number of clients in that fund. They invest their money or put that money in a fund, and then we deploy it, we invest it uh, across the state, again, in Alaska, by Alaska, for Alaska. Uh, honored to have the Alaska Permanent Fund uh, invest a portion of their corpus, not their dividend, their corpus uh, in that fund to generate some, some return in Alaska. Um, direct investment, that means we as a company make investments in Alaska. Maybe we make investments in, in specific companies or opportunities. I'll share some of those ideas with you here in a little bit. And then direct lending is the opportunity whereby we might lend money to a company uh, over and above what a bank might be able to do. And again, we'll talk about some of those opportunities here in a minute. Why would people invest in Alaska? Um, I, I, I might be so bold to say, please hear me clearly on this. Everywhere I go around the world, people know the word Alaska. The Mandarin translation for Alaska is Alaska. The Arabic translation for the word Alaska is Alaska. And all of those pools of capital, trillions of dollars, are looking for the same thing. They're looking for a safe, secure place to invest a lot of money a place where there are resources and opportunities that are abundant, and there's not too much competition for investment. They don't want to have to bid up against other investors. Alaska is the perfect spot for that. We're well known around the, the globe. We're a unique economy. We're very unique, even relative to other oil producing regions, in that we have a very significant tourism component to our business, as we all know. 
a very limited infrastructure. You know, by some accounts, we're 50 years behind the infrastructure development of the rest of the United States. Uh, translated to dollars, that's probably $100 billion. That's $100 billion needed for ports and railways and bridges and roads and, and other types of in infrastructure, including technology infrastructure, think broadband and so on. Um, clearly, if you're, if you're following our, our DC delegation, you know that Alaska is very central to the Arctic strategy of our nation, which includes uh, mineral development. Of course, it includes shipping traffic through the Northwest Passage, might include some military and other strategic benefits. Um, like me, you probably consider the late Senator Stevens your Uncle Ted, uh, as, as I think uh, I did and others as well. Um, you know, he's not here and we're not getting as much federal stimulus as we used to. Um, clearly, we're not getting as much state stimulus. So there is a declining government spend and a need, therefore, for private solutions to sort of fill that gap. That means that capital is scarce. There's not as much money. There's more demand for money than there is money. And this is a big one. Sounds funny. You don't think about it every day. But global pools of capital really like the U.S. dollar and they really like the U.S. rule of law. It makes them feel safe and comfortable. So this is how private investment works, okay? This is how we work it anyway. So first is we're looking for best in class operational partners and capital partners to come here who might not otherwise come. You know, people who really think Alaska is a cool place, but isn't that just where you go on vacation? You know, they don't know what's going on here, but we do and you do. And we have the opportunity to, to bring them here a place they might not otherwise come. These are partners who have specialty expertise in logistics or in oil and gas or in uh, mining or in technology, some specific area of expertise. Now, none of these people are gonna come to Alaska Invest if we won't invest. And, and here's a little anecdote. You all probably remember when they closed down Anchorage when President Xi came from China, I think it was 2015. And they were here to see AGDC, as you know. One of the things that the Chinese delegation said is, hey, we're really excited about potentially investing in Alaska. Who of you is going to invest alongside us in Alaska? Outsiders want a local partner because if the locals aren't willing to do it, why should they? Now, of course, you have to have expertise to do that. You have to have the ability uh, to conceive of an idea and more importantly, the ability to execute on an idea. So connectivity, capital connections and, and resources, operational expertise, those are all super important. Okay, they're important, again, to private investment in Alaska. So why is it critical for us? I mentioned this earlier, but it really, it really uh, is important. You know every time you read the ADN, every time you turn on the news, every time you take, you know, look at your favorite news site, blog site, all we talk about is that there is less state money to go around. And that's true. And I'm not, this isn't about blaming or reasons. It's not relevant. What's, what's relevant is that it's less. And the only way we're going to make stuff happen is if we make it happen ourselves together. Okay. We have aging or non-existent infrastructure. It's hard to get from place to place, hard to get stuff done. If you've ever driven to Fairbanks in the winter, it's a treacherous, it's a treacherous trip, obviously. Alaskans, and I, and I say this um, a little shamefully, we often aren't very connected to the world. We don't really realize how the world is doing stuff. And I'll, I'll warn you, we are at a risk, we're at a risk of the world passing us by. You've probably heard that much of Wall Street won't finance Arctic related development for a variety of different reasons. Fair or not fair, it's truth, right? So we are under connected and we, we run these risks if we, don't, if we don't step up and fill the gap. So now technology can actually fill that gap. I mean, just look at us today. We're all connected via video, right? I wish we were in a room together but we're connected by video and it's pretty, it's pretty good. So the pandemic created a crisis for us. It's been tough. Look around the room, look around this connection. We all have friends and family who've been negatively impacted by this. It's been tough. I'm proud of Alaska for Lincoln Arms, stepping up, helping our neighbors, helping our friends when it's been difficult, but no doubt it's been difficult, but difficult times create opportunities and don't forget that. And last but not least, I mentioned it earlier, my grandparents called it the pioneer spirit. We have a history of making stuff happen. So this is our chance to do it again. So here's some areas where we can make it happen. These aren't, you know, prescriptive. These aren't the only places that you can make things happen. But, you know, clearly energy, as I, as I mentioned, 
uh, you know, Wall Street's really passing energy financing by. But here's the point, whether or not we all drive a Tesla, the reality is most energy production goes into petrochemicals, which include the production of plastic, which goes into your Tesla. So until we solve that problem, oil and gas is still gonna be a part of our economy. And if we can do it better and cheaper and we can do it cleaner, of course we would like to do that. So there's a ton of opportunity in that category. Mining and exploration, here's a way that I like to articulate it. I tell people when I'm outside of Alaska, Alaska is the resource bank for the United States of America. We are the solution to China's control of rare earth uh, minerals, graphite and graphene that goes into electric batteries, um, zinc, lead, molybdenum, silver, gold, and the list goes on. Um, we, we really have an opportunity. Now we have to do it responsibly. I think a few of you probably know my family is fairly opinioned about uh, being responsible about that kind of development. But it's important um, and it, it has a role to play. Tourism, of course, we know is really important. Um, have you ever been on an airplane, Alaska Airlines, and you introduce yourself to the person you're sitting next to and they say, I've always wanted to do this. I am coming to Alaska for vacation. Isn't that fun and exciting? You find yourself talking about all the cool things that they get to do while they're up here, right? We are a lifetime experience for many people. Seafood, of course, used to be the dominant industry in Alaska. I'm a little bit embarrassed to say that we've kind of let others control it. Canadian, Japanese companies kind of controlling our industry up here. We have an opportunity uh, to take our brand and our, our resource back. Uh, transportation and logistics, we're sort of the center of the world. If you, if you remember that map that I showed you there in the beginning, Alaska is kind of equidistant between the major metropolitan areas of North America and Asia. So think of us kind of as the gate. Uh, as the ice melts a bit as well, you get more traffic through the Northwest Passage. So really an important uh, category. And then Arctic and situationally relevant technology, that'd be things uh, that are related to Arctic policy and related to the rise of technology in the world. Think of uh, Skylink or Elon Musk's, you know, we're gonna put satellites in space and you're gonna be able to use your cell phone in you know, Lake Clark National Park. That's great, um, but there's a lot of technology that goes into that. And Alaska has a, has a role to play. So here it is in black and white and yellow. Alaska offers investors emerging markets, that means high return, but with the security of the USA. High return with the security of the USA. Every single major investor I speak to all over the world, this is what they want. It is attractive to global investors. And as a result, we have the opportunity to bring billions of dollars into the state. Now, we have to do it properly. So we'll talk about that. So there's three ways to do it. There's three ways to attract capital and, and make it special, make it powerful for us. And, and I would like to say a couple of things about that before we get sort of too far down the pipe here of those, of those three things. You know, I've been trying to lay out a plan here or a, or a pathway that Alaska's future is very, very bright. It's very positive. Um, we have the right team in place uh, to, to support Alaska in its development. That's our team. That's your team. That's other entities, AEDC, uh, APFC, uh, the Alaska Retirement Management Board, and others really have the opportunity to use our collective wisdom and our collective experience to do that for our great state. I often tell people I bleed blue and gold, and uh, I know many of you in the audience uh, do as well. So we can use our existing resources. One of the things that people talk about is how, you know, our greatest resource is oil, our greatest resource is gas, or it's mining or whatever. It's actually, in my view, it's capital. Per resident in Alaska, we have more capital than any other state in the union, per resident, okay? So I'm talking about the, the permanent fund, the Alaska Retirement Management Board, the Anchorage Municipal Board, the University Endowment, you know, all of those entities are capital. They make investments on behalf of their beneficiaries. And many of those investments are in private companies, direct lending, the kinds of things I talked about earlier. Imagine if the some hundred plus billion dollars, maybe more, maybe 150, 200 billion dollars, just in those uh, capital pools I mentioned, allocated 5%. To Alaska. Not having your brother-in-law build a donut, you know, distribution company on the corner. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about real development, properly structured, 5%. 5% of 200 billion? 
I mean, that's huge investment. So that's what the Alaska Permanent Fund did with their, what they called Emerging Manager Program. Many of you probably heard about this. Um, we were very uh, grateful and fortunate to receive an investment in our fund, the Nanook Investment Fund from the APFC uh, and other clients, not just the APFC. Again, this is not part of the dividend program. This is part of their collective investment program to make investments for return in Alaska, to demonstrate that there are great opportunities in Alaska for return. Now, if we can do that and we can stimulate the Alaska ecosystem at the same time, that's even better. But that's one small fraction of what could be done. If we all pooled our resources and said, I want to invest some little portion, appropriate, responsible portion of my investments in Alaska. Really important. Here's an example of that using your resources. Did you know that Alaska is the only commercial spaceport in the United States? This is a place where you can launch satellites into space and in all the northern latitudes in order to get your cell phone to work in Lake Clark National Park or the gates of the Arctic or wherever, you gotta have satellites. You can actually do that from Kodiak. This is a great company. We're thrilled to be part of it. Um, it's built by a, a really impressive team of people. Their primary business is in Alaska for launch from Kodiak. Their executive team has experience from all of the great places from NASA to SpaceX and so on. And we were really excited to make an investment uh, in them in, in early uh, 2020. They made a very successful launch. I'll show you a video of that in a minute. And more recently, they've announced a public offering. Think about that. We're launching rockets into space. So I don't know about you, but I get kind of excited about this. So I turned off the volume because if I left the volume on, nobody would listen to me. So, but here's what I wanna tell you. Tell me this isn't cool. Tell me this isn't the opportunity of a lifetime. Tell me this isn't working actually, which is a little problematic here. There we go. Um, to see this happen in Alaska is shocking. It's awesome. Some of the world's greatest venture investors uh, involved in this company, involved in bringing business to Alaska, making investment here. I mean, can you imagine you're out there fishing in Kodiak and you see this go off? I mean, wow. I mean, super cool. I mean, I felt like I was 15 jumping up and down, watching this, uh, rocket launch with, with the McKinley team was super fun and exciting, super, uh, energizing because it creates all kinds of investment opportunities in Kodiak and in collaboration with the University of Alaska Fairbanks and their programs up there. I mean, they actually, made it to space with a rocket that costs a million dollars to launch. Now a million dollars is a lot of money, but it's not for a rocket launch. So imagine putting thousands of satellites in space to achieve this technology stuff that we're talking about. Now you can do it from Alaska. I mean, I don't know about you, but to me, that's, that's pretty, pretty darn exciting. So we're really excited about that uh, opportunity that again, is a good example here of, of using your resources. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to move this on here. All right, let's see if we can do it like this. All right, get old school here. So that's the, the opportunity um, for something new. Again, use your, use your existing resources. Here's another one. I mentioned this earlier. You know, the global seafood business is very global. And yet Alaska has a role to play. And we were, we were pretty excited and honored to bring a storied name back to Alaska, back to the United States from a, from a Japanese conglomerate. Great group, great firm, uh, lots of respect for them, but they didn't really care about Alaska. And yet all the resources of Peter Pan come from Bristol Bay, come from Valdez, come from Port Moeller. Um, you know, it's really uh, come from King Cove. They didn't care about King Cove. Again, with respect, um, we are friends and neighbors with King Cove. We care about King Cove. And that really is an opportunity to use our resources for our benefit and our job opportunities. Number two is to identify new opportunities. So this is a fun one. Uh, when you got uh, really down to it and you started looking at Ted Stevens Anchorage International, man, they have a really amazing opportunity. They're one of the largest uh, air cargo ports in the entire world, um, fourth in the world actually. Uh, by tonnage second in the world by value so if you have an iphone today it came from china it came from taiwan it landed at anchorage international right most of the goods and services that come to north america from asia pass through ted stevens anchorage international so when you go over there and you say gosh what do you need 
what they say is, well, we need a place to, to transfer this stuff. We need a place to keep things cold. We're passing, you know, agricultural goods from Latin America onto Asia. There's no place to keep everything cold. So we're really excited to be working on this uh, property. It's just a conception. Uh, it's something that we dreamed up. It's something that we partnered with an outside logistics expert, and it's something that we're turning on at Ted Stevens Anchorage International Airport. Imagine 32 and a half million cubic feet of capacity. Dream it up, and it's possible in our state. And lastly, make it easier to do business. I'll make, I'll make one statement about this. There's lots of ways to make a business easier to do or to, to happen in Alaska. We can all play our part in that. Here's a way we can. We actually think capital is a little bit scarce and it's hard for companies to borrow money. Clearly, there's a banking market for that. There's some government resources for that, the, the Small Business Administration, U.S. Department of Agriculture, et cetera. But the reality is it's hard for companies to get capital so they can grow their business. It's hard for companies to acquire other businesses. And so we felt like, gosh, this was something that we can really do is that we can create a place for good ideas to come for capital and to make it easier for our companies and our population to grow their businesses. Here's a fun fact. There are about 70,000 LLCs in our state. So 10% of the state's population, roughly, uh, has there's a separate LLC for it. That's an enormous percentage relative to the rest of the United States. We are a very entrepreneurial society. And let's give our entrepreneurs access to capital so they can make cool stuff happen. Now, here's why I think we have an advantage. The great thing about Alaska is there's a ton of really smart people here. But again, it's a little bit tricky to sort of walk this line or this balancing act of of making it happen in Alaska, bringing outsiders in, being sort of the stable local connection, you know, connected to you, connected to AEDC, connected to our political leaders, the legislature, connected to business leaders. That, that's a little bit of a tricky wicket to, to kind of walk through, to manage. Um, I, I'm, again, feeling very grateful. You can see my team here on the right, some really smart and dedicated people, people who could have lived anywhere in the world, and they chose to live here. They chose to relocate their families here, to raise their children here, to, to go to school here, to make a commitment to our economy. Um, you know, we've been doing this for a long time. Being a professional investor is tough. You know, your, your, your goal every day is to make money for your clients. But as many Alaskans will tell you, we may care about that, but it's way more than making money. It's making a place to live. It's making opportunities for our kids and for our grandkids. It's making this the place that when your kids go away to college, they choose to come home. And many don't, right? We want to change that. So being around for a long time, caring a lot about this place, building a world-class data-oriented investment methodology, uh, bringing in people from outside to relocate again and raise their families and, and build their careers here. Um, lots of connection to the world. Our largest client is actually in Europe, in the Netherlands. So we're, you, you know, obviously have lots of access to, to capital and to people who are looking for that Alaska advantage. That's really important. Um, and people are looking for something different. They're looking for something exciting. When you make, when you make an investment, you want to make a difference. Yeah, okay, you have to make a return. But gosh, if you can make a difference, that's important. And if you can do it in a place you really want to visit, that's even better, right? And that, that creates that linkage, that ability to bring best-in-class operators here in categories. You know, there, there really weren't any rocket companies in Alaska. There are a few exceptions to that. Um, so I'm thinking of, of, you know, the launch company and a few others, uh, some great friends over there. Ben, congratulations. Exciting business. And last but not least, the industry has recognized this as a great place to work. And here's the thing that's relevant to this. So this, this Best Places to Work is an industry award. There's lots of industries out there you participate in them. You've seen these kinds of things, but here's what matters to me. Here's what it says. It says, wow, you can work on Wall Street and you can have this kind of a lifestyle. Who wouldn't want that? Who wouldn't want the ability to go mountain biking in the afternoon, to climb flat top, to ski in Girdwood, to float down a river, to fish, to fly, to hunt, all the great things that we get to do in our state. We get to do it and we get to be connected to the world, connected to Wall Street. I'm really proud of that. I'm really proud of the people that I work with. I've tried to surround myself with some really smart people. I'm grateful to them for all their work on the investment side, uh, private investment side. This is a great group of people that, that lead this group here. Uh, Penny, Logan, Joe, Jared, and John uh, really lead a great group of people here in making uh, investments for our state, in our state, by our state, uh, as I mentioned. Before I open it up to questions, I want to say a couple of quick things. 
when my parents and my grandparents uh, grew up here, they didn't know what was going to happen in the world. They didn't worry about the tough times. They just figured it out. And we really have the opportunity to do that here. And we have the opportunity to do that now. We can coordinate. We can cooperate. We can create value that's extraordinary. So I'm going to give you a math equation. I'm going to leave you with this. There are some $30 trillion in investment pools around the world that allocate anywhere from 15 to 50% of their assets uh, into private investment opportunities. If a fraction of that comes to Alaska, that could be 10, 20, 30, 100, 200, 400 billion dollars of capital. In theory, that could come to Alaska if we could just create an opportunity for them. Okay, put that in perspective. We have a $55 billion economy in Alaska. And we could bring capital that's worth a multiple of that if we just believed. This is why I'm bullish on Alaska. This is why I hope you're bullish on Alaska. I'd love to talk to you. I'm sorry we can't do this in person, but if we have the opportunity, I'd love to hear from you either here or afterwards. Bill, I'm going to uh, let it go back to you and to uh, take some questions. But thanks again for having me. Really, uh, really a pleasure to be here. Rob, thanks so much. That was a tremendous presentation, uh, just very inspiring. And, uh, you know, speaking my language, I just loved everything that you just shared with us. So thank you so much. Uh, we definitely want to go to questions from the audience uh, here in a minute. But I've just got a couple of questions that I'd like to ask you up front, Rob. So when you're looking at deal structure, when you're looking at opportunities, and you talk quite a bit about wanting to attract, you know, provide opportunities to attract investment, what are some of the questions that you would ask about an investment that would help us to better understand the expectations that we would need to meet of any investor? Well, actually, that's probably the most important question that investors should ask and entrepreneurs should have answers for. So thank you for asking it. Uh, I would say a couple of things. Everybody focuses their attention on investment and what's the opportunity. How much money am I going to make? How am I going to develop growth? You know, all that stuff. What they forget to talk about is operationally, how are they gonna execute? Okay, that's really important. I mean, we can build a big project out at the airport and create a thousand jobs, but somebody actually has to dig the hole and pour the concrete and put up the building and you know put a key lock in the door, right? So making sure you have the operational piece of it is super critical. And last but not least is what's the end game? So once you get this done, what are you gonna do with it? How are you gonna exit? Investors have to make a return. If you own a building and you never sell it, the only return you get is rent. That's okay, but you have to be able to articulate that that's what you're going to get. So I think, you know, uh, operational execution, super important and exit, super important. So I would certainly encourage entrepreneurs to think about the investment part of it, which they're great at, but then the operation and the exit is, is something that's often a little under analyzed before people bring an investment to, at least to our attention. So I'm going to ask another question here right quick, and then we're going to go ahead and go to the audience, but this is one that I occasionally want to ask different speakers and your presentation was absolutely full of optimism and enthusiasm for the future of Anchorage and Alaska and, and I think I, I share those views but we also have to remember that there are some challenges out there and what my interest is what's keeping you up at night right now? You know I said this before I mean I think as human beings you know all you got to do is is you know, drive down the street, I can see it over here in front of Barnes and Noble or up on the corner of, you know, Northern Lights and, and Minnesota. I mean, we, we have some of our, you know, fellow citizens and residents who are in really dire situations. So obviously that keeps me up and I think that keeps everybody up at night. As an investor, what keeps me up at night uh, is that Alaska gets passed by by the world. There are so many uh, places out there that are focused on uh, accepting capital and organizing themselves so as to accept institutional or professional capital. Alaska is not one of them. When I turn on this TV behind my screen and it's got financial news on CNBC, Bloomberg TV, that kind of stuff, you see advertisements from Michigan and Indiana. Well, where the heck is the advertisement for Alaska? Like, there's nothing, right? So we got to remember, we got to put a big open for business sign. Now, that doesn't mean we're open for all business and all people and all circumstances. We have to do it properly. Nobody wants a garbage dump in your backyard, me either. But having said that, we gotta say we're open for business and we gotta say, what do we offer you as a potential investor that's good for you? 
And if you can sort of organize your, your rationale around, here's the feature about why we're special and here's the benefit to you, money will come. Excellent. All right, let's go to questions from the audience. Spencer, what kind of questions do we have, sir? Hi, Bill and Rob. Um, one question we had from uh, someone in the audience was, in attempting to recruit and retain a talented, youthful workforce, what investment opportunities can you share for retaining and recruiting young talent? You know, um, I'm going to say something a little controversial. Investment people are people too. And, you know, people think of Wall Streeters as, you know, sometimes, you know, not the nicest of people. And maybe you've seen a movie or two about that. But the reality is people want to come and join a team that's dynamic, that's young, that's fun, that does something that's special, that's important, that makes a difference every day. They want to have a purpose. So we try to be a place where we can, we can demonstrate a purpose. We can create opportunities for our, you know, friends and neighbors, colleagues, residents, citizens of, of the state. Uh, that's number one. Number two, of course, is we got to be a great place to live and work, right? All you got to do is look out the window, and I think we've we've kind of got that covered. But that that goes to infrastructure in our city too. You know, you got to be able to get around. You got to be able to have a place to live. It can't be too expensive. So I think if people will move to Bend, Oregon, why don't they move here? Right? They should. Um, and then obviously, last but not least, you know, investment people are kind of geeky, you know, finance types. They want to work on cool projects and interesting problems. They want to have some upward mobility. They want to know what their compensation is, you know, all the normal stuff. Um, and I, I think that um, the way at least we articulate it is this isn't for everybody, but man, this is a special place for somebody. And uh, we've been very fortunate to, to do that. And especially in the era of the pandemic, I can tell you this, a lot of people used to ride the subway to work or send in their resumes to us. Uh, and you can probably guess why. Thank you for that. Um, another question was about what types of investments you're currently looking at uh, to invest into the degree that you're comfortable speaking about that. Yeah. What kind of what kind of industries? Well, you know, categorically, we sort of think of it a little bit as new Alaska. So new ways of plumbing old industries, new industries. I mean, who would have thought you could have a rocket launch in Kodiak? You know, can you imagine the poor guy on the back of his boat out there in the harbor looking up and thinking that the world was coming to an end as a, you know, what probably looked like a missile? Uh, going off. But, uh, you know, I, I think uh, New Alaska is encompassing of those industry groups that I mentioned, but think about it in a little different way. New opportunities to bring business back to Alaska, new ways of plumbing older businesses in Alaska, new ways of doing business, let's say on the slope, clean energy, better monitoring, uh, things of that nature. Obviously, transportation and logistics, I gave some examples of that. I mean, imagine for just a moment, um, you know, if you go, if you ship something on a ship from Europe to Asia or from Asia to Europe, you got to go through the Panama Canal right now, okay? If you go through the Northwest Passage, it cuts 2,500 nautical miles off of the trip. I mean, the savings is astronomical, right? So as the sea ice has been melting, more and more traffic is coming through the, through the, the channel or through the passage. So, uh, you know, again, I, I would say it's almost everywhere that there's opportunity. Uh, in Alaska, you just kind of have to know how to connect it to the world and, and put a proper capital structure together. You can't just throw money at something. Um, and, I, and I say that respectfully, but there's, you know, I think we all know of projects in Alaska, around Alaska, especially in rural Alaska that were sort of not very well conceived. And now the ruins of some project are sitting over there in a remote village or something that was, was inappropriately conceived of. You, you gotta make sure you don't do that. Um, but I, I would say new Alaska really applies to almost everywhere. I know you touched on it a little bit before, but can you talk a little bit again about, um, someone's asking about the investment range in terms of minimum and maximum. Yeah. You guys try to be. Sure. Well, it sort of depends on whether it's an equity investment or whether it's a loan or, you know, whether it's a project that we do on our balance sheet or whether it's a project we do on one of our funds, but I'll, I'll give you some sort of general parameters. So generally speaking, if you are an entrepreneur and you're starting a business in Alaska, you have pretty good access to capital up to a million bucks or so. You can get an SBA loan, you can borrow from friends and family, you can take out a loan maybe, uh, you can dip into your savings. I mean, there's some ways to do it. Once you get above a million dollars, it gets a little tough, right? And certainly once you get above five, six, seven million dollars, it gets really tough. So our bottom is kind of in that category. It's in the sort of mid single digit millions. It's kind of the beginning point where it's otherwise difficult to get capital. 
Um, our largest investment could be hundreds of millions of dollars. Again, it's not uh, so much size specific as it's opportunity specific. And does that investment create kind of or become a fulcrum to create other investment uh, in the category? When Astra came to Kodiak and they made investments in the actual launch pad, now all of a sudden there's the ability to bring other companies. As you all know, there are lots of rocket companies in the world, SpaceX and Blue Origin and some of those being some of the more famous. Um, but investment in Kodiak can now take the next size of rocket up and then maybe a little more investment gives the next size. And pretty soon, maybe all of the companies could come to Alaska. So, you know, again, it's not so much size specific as it, what it is rather what it stimulates. We had uh, two different questions about building relationships with specific geographic areas. And someone asked if you thought Alaska could benefit by building closer relationships with the rest of the Pacific Northwest. And then another attendee asked um, about building relationships with Australian companies and how we've seen investment there and what we can do to continue and expand on that. Well, let me answer that in two different ways, Spencer. And again, I appreciate the audience's questions here. So um, let's start with Australia. So. Building relationships can be simply, simply providing a complement uh, by following someone else's blueprint. You know, you think about Western Australia, for example, and Perth and what they've been able to do there in the mining space and the significant infrastructure investment that has gone into that community. It's now a big, thriving community, rail infrastructure, port infrastructure, all kinds of stuff that, that have occurred because they thought forward about how they're going to develop their infrastructure to support development of their economy. And they did a great job. So building a relationship by copying or mirroring uh, some business models uh, is a form of compliment, at least I think it is. It's not technically having a relationship. Um, but, you know, I can tell you the people up in Ambler are excited about South 32, which is, you know, a UK Australian mining company that's, that's helping to develop the Ambler metals uh, resource up there. So that's, that's number one. As far as relationships, I, I think... I think Alaskans, and I mean this really lovingly, and I, I fall into this category sometimes too, I think we sometimes don't know what we don't know, right? We, we, it's the unknown unknown, right? So I think what, what we sometimes find ourselves doing is not understanding how the machine of the global economy works. And we kind of say, well, this is what we want to do because this is what we want to do, and dang it, we're from Alaska. And the economy goes, you know, I got $50 billion to invest, and it's kind of a pain, it's far away, and people don't really get it. It's not really structured in a way that communicates well with me. So yeah, I forget Alaska. So I think building relationships and demonstrating that you're willing to listen, you're willing to partner, you're willing to, you know, collaborate. I think that is critical. I, I wouldn't say that it's just the Pacific Northwest, but clearly that, you know, that's obviously a great place to start. Great. Thank you. Uh, another question was um, about attracting investment from residents of Alaska that are interested in making a difference here, along with making a return. Uh, does McKinley have a strategy for that or how do you look at yeah. that? Well, again, we're sort of a multi-dimensional firm. I mean, we do public investments and we have individual customers and we do private investments and we have, you know, smaller institutions and, and so on. So yes, I, I do think it's, it's possible to make a difference. I, I will say this, typically the way Alaskans make a difference in Alaska uh, is they do something personally. You know, they buy a company or they invest in their friend's business or something like that. Um, what we don't do a great job is telling our financial services institutions, uh, us included, but, you know, some of the bigger global ones, hey, how come my Alaska 529 plan doesn't include <clears throat> any Alaskan options? I'm saving for my kids' college in the Alaska 529 plan run by a firm based in Baltimore. Again, a great firm. Don't get me wrong. But I think asking the question, it's kind of like buy Alaska. You go to the grocery store and you say, hey, you know, I'd really like to buy Alaska. I'd like to buy Clear Alaskan from Alaska. I'd like to buy, you know, local resources, uh, Alaska grown. You got to ask. So I think Alaskans can do that. You know, our firm certainly has, has options for individual investors. We talk to them all the time, but you know, others do as well. But I think the key is to, to ask and to be thoughtful about it. You know, don't bet your house on something just because it's Alaska. It has to be a proper investment, but assuming it's a proper investment, why wouldn't you want to make a difference? If you can make a return that helps you retire or pays for medical expenses or pays for your kid's college and you can make a difference in your community, wouldn't you want to do that? So I think the answer is ask. Rob, I've got one more. We really um, generated a lot of questions this talk. Um, someone was asking, when you speak to others about co-investing in Alaska, 
who do you find that um, is the most interested in and actually follows through if there's um, yeah so we call those players best in class operators so these are people who have what's called domain expertise so they might be somebody who invests only in tech they might be somebody who invests only in venture capital right i mean you look at the people invested in alongside us in astra i mean it's a who's who of silicon valley um I think what people are interested in is they're interested in knowing if their domain expertise has an outlet in our community. And they're not from here. And we don't really advertise very well telling people what's available. And so they want to know that there's something available. Um, I, I would say we've had some really great success and we're, we're super excited about and grateful to our partners from all over. We have some from Texas, we have some from California, we have some from from Denver, some from Silicon Valley, as I said. And what they say is, look, we want to do something here. We want to do something important. We obviously have to generate a return. This is our core competency. Can you find us something there? So here's what's unique about us. We don't claim to be the world's expert on rocket launches. We don't claim to be the world's expert in seafood. What we claim is to be the world's expert in Alaska. And let us partner with somebody who has domain expertise in that category, whatever it is, and let's make something great together. And let's create some jobs in Alaska and some economic benefit, whatever that economic benefit is. Uh, I think that's, that's something that we can do and we can do together. And, and you know, it's just optimism. It's, it's optimism because it's better than pessimism. Who wants to be grouchy all the time, right? But, but more importantly, when I went over to the airport and I asked Jim Sesniak, and I have a huge respect for the airport director. This is Jim Sesniak. And DOT Commissioner McKinnon and Commerce Commissioner Julie Anderson. I said, you know, if you had a blank piece of paper, what would you do? And they said, oh my gosh, you see that facility out there or that piece of property out there? We would love to have something there. And I said, well, why didn't somebody do it? Well, it's never been done before. Don't be fearful of something that's never been done before. Because if we were fearful of that, we wouldn't be a state, period. We wouldn't be here. Right? So you can't be fearful of whether or not it's been done before, because here's the truth. We're building a giant facility out at the airport. It's been done somewhere. It may never been done here, but it's still been done somewhere. Right? So those are some, maybe some perspectives to consider. Well, thank you, Rob. I really appreciate uh, you taking the time to answer all those questions. And that was all the questions we had in the Q and A. Um, while I'm on real quick, I want to make sure that I tell everybody we're going to be back July 14th, 10, with Julie Soppy from the president and CEO of Visit Anchorage. and looking forward to hearing her talk about what tourism looks like this season and some of the steps they're taking. Um, and with that, I'll hand it back off to Bill. Thank you, Spencer. Well, folks, I think we're coming up to the top of the hour. Uh, Rob, any last thoughts that you want to share before we wrap things up here? You know, the cool thing about people from Anchorage and people from Alaska, Bill, is there's no lock on good ideas. Everybody has them. So I would encourage everybody here to kind of try to paint a little brighter picture, take that, you know, visibility that's a little bit cloudy or a little bit bearish here and move it out here and see a little bit of sunshine and some opportunity. And if you have a, a good idea, reach out. We'd love to talk to you. I mean, again, if Jim Sesniak hadn't said, hey, I've had this idea at the airport, we wouldn't be building what is probably the largest, uh, you know, infrastructure construction project in Anchorage if he wouldn't have said, I have an idea. So if you have an idea, you know, come talk to us. Go talk to your financial advisor. Go talk to Bill. Bill, I'm volunteering you. Um, you know, go, go talk to somebody because the greatest idea in the world is irrelevant if you don't share it and make it, make it a reality. So let's make some reality together. Um, again, grateful for our partnership, uh, Bill. Uh, really enjoy working with you and the team. Glad that you're here and, and helping advise all of us in Anchorage about our future and the economics and what we need to do to, to make our city and our state a better place. Spencer, thank you. And, and thanks to everybody for dialing in today. Well, Rob, thank you. We know how busy you are and we deeply appreciate the generosity of, of you giving your time and your perspectives with our audience. Um, this, is, this has been an exciting show for us to host, and I know that our good friends at AES and BMG are equally excited for having had the opportunity to sponsor today's event. Um, I want to just do a quick shout out because I work with them all the time. Uh, the enthusiasm that we get from McKinley Research Group and the work that they do in many of our significant research projects that we do annually, as well as special projects, 
there is no finer team of researchers that you could find in Alaska to help you understand an opportunity, tear it apart, put it back together, and make good decisions based on good information. So I just, I needed to do that personal shout out because we've worked with them for over a decade in, in, in my role here at AEDC. And I look forward to many, many more years of working with them again in the future. Um, Rob, thank you so much. Deeply appreciate you being here today. Our thanks to everybody who attended. Um, this will be available in a um, uh, recorded format in, uh, in, in the next two weeks, if memory serves. And uh, folks should keep an eye out for that. That notice will go out and we hope that everybody will take time uh, we usually get hundreds of folks viewing the video. Uh, I think we're going to have a much larger turnout on this one. All thanks to you, Rob, and your team at, Mc at McKinley. So thank you so much again for being here today. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. And we'll see you again at next month's AEDC Voice. Thank you all. Nice yeah. Thank you. Hi, Paula. Thank you, Bill. Appreciate it.